How's it going, eh? Welcome to Sixes Overdrive, straight from Canada. We're going to give you the news today. My name is Kent on the DJI Osmo Mobile. So let's get into it here, guys. I'm going to tell you very quickly how this thing works, what all the buttons do, what can it do, and then I'm going to give you into what I do like and what I don't like. And that's it. It's not going to be a full-on tech review, but it's going to be something that a guy who uses a camera has used it and knows what he's talking about a little bit. All right, let's get into it. First of all, why would you get one of these things? Why would you get one that fits with your mobile phone instead of getting a full-on gimbal for a full-size camera? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's convenience. These things are for B-roll footage. You can take your interview rolls or whatever you want with your fancy cameras, your DSLRs or your RED cameras, but this little thing for taking the little footage that goes with that, all the little B-roll and stuff, it's phenomenal. And the cameras nowadays are so sophisticated that come on cell phones. The iPhone 7, the Samsung 7 and Google Pixel are perfect examples of this. You can record slow motion video on them. These things do just about everything and they shoot in 4k now at 30 frames per second so these cell phones are now basically what you need just about anybody can use these instead of a full-on rig and it saves you so much time because you always have your phone with you it's always right there in your pockets you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna tell you all the features DJI has an app called DJI go and those of you that have drones will know it well um, this is the same app you use to control the uh, gimbal here are some of the features that are available from the app that connect to your phone when you get the DJI Osmo Mobile. You control all your phone's functions from pressing record to pressing the photo shutter release button uh, to controlling which way it goes up and down. Uh, you can set it back and forth to selfie mode. All that's controlled right there in the DJI Osmo Mobile app and it goes back and forth between the device and the phone. So there's some communication there that lets that app talk to the actual uh, gimbal and uh, you can do a whole bunch of functions right off your phone, right with the gimbal without having to do this on your phone. Another great feature is motion time lapse. Set the point here, set a point there, and it travels across the sky, and it's beautiful. You just go do something else for a little while, set it for seven or eight minutes. That's about all you usually need for a nice little time lapse of three or four seconds, and it, it's phenomenal. Usually, you'd have to pay seven, eight hundred dollars for a device that would just slide with your camera while you're doing that and time it out. And this little thing, it's all inclusive. It's 400 bucks Canadian. It's even less American, 300, I believe. You can set the exposure. You simply tap on the screen and set it up and down and it changes the exposure in your uh, camera so you can go from a dark look to a very overblown, oversaturated, uh, overexposed look. You can do that all on the back of the app. It's got motion tracking, subject tracking. All you have to do is draw a square around the subject that you're tracking on the phone and it follows you around. It's like having an extra cameraman. You can post directly to social media. You can do your Facebook Live, you can do Vimeo, you can do YouTube. YouTube, it's all there in the app. You can calibrate the gimbal and the phone together. If something's a little bit off, you can actually go into your settings and calibrate right there in the mode of the gimbal itself. It's very easy to do. And don't forget this thing from the start compared to a regular gimbal takes about 20 seconds to get hooked up compared to ones with the camera where you've got the big double joysticks on it to keep it stable. Those things take 15 minutes to balance out your camera and everything. Once you have your phone set in this thing, you simply put it in, screw it, turn it, and it's done. You can set the video resolution, you can go 4K, you can go 1080p, you can do 720, you can set that all within the DJI Osmo Go app. You also can set your white balance, your flash, you can set up a, a guiding grid so that you get your rule of thirds going. It's got just about everything right there in the app. Now that's all the good about that uh, DJI Osmo app, but seriously, I only use it for two things. And the two things I use it for are the subject tracking, motion time lapse. Motion time lapse is wonderful, subject tracking is wonderful, but I think the communication between the two will cause the system to glitch every now and then. And that's not good when you're trying to get some footage and then the footage freezes up. I don't always use the DJI Osmo app. I only use it for those two things. I go into the native app used by the phone or camera 
to generally do just about everything else because nothing freezes up in those apps. Now, I don't know how that works exactly for the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus because there's some image stabilization issues there that I don't know if DJI has fixed yet. They're constantly putting out firmware. I've updated mine twice since I bought this thing a couple weeks ago and uh, that's done right within the app as well, by the way. But uh, for some reason, there's some image stabilization thing. It doesn't happen if you're an Android user, apparently. It's just the iPhone 7 users. And guys, just to be aware too, you will not get the glitchiness if you're just using the phone's camera app, but you will lose the functionality of all those controlling your shutter release and everything. You won't be able to do that from the camera. You'll have to touch the back of the camera. But a lot of us are a lot more comfortable with our phones than we are with the back of that DJI Osmo mobile setup anyway. We can do things very easily on the back of our cameras and it still will work as a gimbal. It'll still be stabilized shots and everything. I would just use it for, like I said, the subject tracking and the motion time lapse. Other than that, don't use the app. So let's get into the controls on the gimbal. All right, the DJI Osmo mobile, right from where you have it with your thumb button, uh, you're going to notice that you have a joystick to control things. You can use the shutter button in the app and you can also use the uh, movie uh, to press record for a movie on there. Uh, the, the joystick moves the camera back and forth, up and down and everything. So it's very handy, it's very ergonomic, it works really great. Now, if you go to the side, on the right hand side you'll find a power button. That's to turn the thing on and off. It has some other functions, you'll have to look into them because I have no idea what they are. They're for resetting certain things, um, but I've never used them. I'm not going to go into them today. Anyway, that's how you turn the thing on and off. If you go to the front of the camera, you're going to find a trigger, just like a little gun. Uh, you click it once and it'll hold the Osmo Mobile in place while you move it up and down. So it'll keep your screen at a fixed rate. So you're doing this kind of thing, right? Uh, you click it twice and it resets it back to the center position all balanced up. Now if you click it three times and you're in the Osmo Mobile app, not when you're just using your native camera app, it'll switch around to a selfie mode. All right, now just above that trigger is a controversial little thing that we have here, and that's the charging port. And it uses the same type of jack you'd use for a headphone jack. Why did they do this? Well, my guess is because there's another idiotic manufacturer out there called Apple that decides they like to put all their own different little plugins for their phone in the back and they don't have headphone ports and there's got a lightning jack that costs a lot of money to send off. So my guess is when DJI packaged this thing up, they made their own little cord just because if they didn't, because of Apple using a lightning jack instead of what everybody else uses, the mini USB, they'd have to send two expensive cords. This way they get away with sending just one. If they would have been like everybody else and just used a micro USB, we'd all be laughing right now. If everybody would just switch to that, it would be fantastic. Are you listening, Apple? Are you listening, DJI? Anybody else who decides to come up with their own goofy adapter sizes? Okay, one thing you're gonna have to know about the DJI Osmo is when you get out of the box, you're gonna be very excited to use it, and that's a no-no. They want you to let it recharge for about three hours before you use it, then after you recharge it, you're gonna have to download some firmware into it and make sure you have the DJI Osmo mobile app so that you can get your calibration straight. So expect four hours before you can start using this device. Uh, it has run mode and walk mode and uh, everything works pretty good. I did some running shots as well and, and they're nice and smooth. Uh, everything about this thing works really well. It's just designed what it needs to do. So before I start talking about how I feel about the Osmo Mobile, by the way, I love it as a spoiler. I'm going to give you my likes and dislikes about this unit. Uh, Let's start with the dislikes first, all right? So the dislikes, it's that app that freezes up from time to time and with the 7, it actually has some glitchiness with the image stabilization. They should get that right in the firmware and they should get it right fast because it's really annoying. Um, even though you can get out of it by just going into the native camera app, we should be blown away by the in-app capabilities of this thing and not want to use our phone if they were doing it right, but they're not. They're only giving us two things that we want to use out of the whole app. Charging port and cable, I already rambled about that one a little bit, but the charging port and cable, that's really a dumb thing, but I know why they did it, and I'm going to blame Apple because I blame Apple for a lot of things. Corporate evil giants. The other thing I don't like about the DJI Osmo Mobile is the fact that it's got a 
tripod mount on the side that you're supposed to buy an adapter and that adapter costs a hundred dollars and you have to rig up your own crap to get the thing to work now i really don't appreciate that it seems like a cheap thing um i don't like it at all i don't want to pay another hundred dollars i thought four hundred dollars was enough the last but not least and i'm going to group these into two things is it's a little bit limited because of the size of it and the phone, the way it bumps into each other when you're moving it. So you can't twist it right up. Uh, it's going to knock it out of kilter. Uh, you can't turn it upside down right away. You're going to have to reset and think about what you're doing to do one of those low shots where you get right down and do it. So that's a little bit of a bad thing. You can do it though. It still works and uh, it could be a little bit smoother, but then you'd need a five axle gimbal and that's going to cost you a little bit more money. Let's get into what I do like about this gimbal now. All right, first of all, the super ease of using it, the fact that it takes 20 seconds to set up and you're off and running and you're getting professional looking results. Number two, it does what it's advertised to do and so many products these days don't do that. They let you down. This thing keeps running. I've ran it in the cold. I've ran it all over the place and it's not even supposed to run in the cold, but it does. It's got a nice carrying case with little side pouches in it. I really like that because I can put the, the things needed by this DJI Osmo in that little uh, area there. I like that they allow you to run it without the app, that you don't need the app to run the thing, that it just works as a nice balanced gimbal um, when you're just using your phone because let's face it, most of us are more familiar with our phones than the DJI Go app, so we're gonna use that more. So guys, what do you think of this new DJI Osmo Mobile? Are you a big fan of it? Are you thinking of getting it for yourselves? Put it in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you and I promise I'll get back to you. Guys, remember to share, like, comment and subscribe so that you can watch a Canadian view on things. This is Sixes Overdrive, Kent Fleming. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.